Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYNT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. We first told you yesterday that Copper Glow is buying the black jewel mines in Harlan and Letcher counties. Now the miners are looking to receive the money they were guaranteed. Those miners say they will not end their protest until that money is in their accounts. Today, the miners met with lawyers fighting for their wages. WYNT's Emily Bennett was there. It seemed like hope was lost, but then... When they said <clears throat> bankruptcy court, Mostly people lose, you know, and they fought and fought and fought for us. So it's a small victory. Attorney Ned Pillersdorf met with the miners with good news after Copper Glow bought the mines. Assuming they mine coal, we know we're getting at least a million, and us and the government uh, are going to negotiate over the six million. That negotiation over a property lien. We got a fair shot of getting a big chunk of the six million. Pillersdorf was shocked at how well the court hearing went and the judge's response. The, the, the nation rallied around him, understood how badly they'd been mistreated, and I think that impacted things. You know, the judge made a comment to the lawyers that these gentlemen need to be treated with respect. But the miners are still waiting for their money. It's here to get our wages. And I mean, yeah, they're saying right now that they're paid, uh, but we've not seen it. So when we see it, we'll be on our way. And they want to make sure those checks don't bounce. Decided to, uh, you know, one of us at a time go cast the check. And if it clears, next person goes down and casts the check. But until then, they have support around them. But have you seen those Harlan miners out here on the tracks? Anything can happen when we have each other's backs. Wanting to see a happy ending. In Harlan County, Emily Bennett, WYMT Mountain News. The mood has certainly changed at the tracks. The miners say there is now a sense of happiness and hope. Now to Lawrence County, where a 14-year-old girl fended off intruders with a gun. It happened Sunday in the Blaine community. Police say two burglars tried to break into a home. Only two teenage girls were inside at the time. One grabbed a gun, loaded it, and fired a warning shot. The two intruders took off. Constable Daniel Castle says she had to do what was necessary. Considering that she's 14 years old, she did a good job. Uh, I encourage you know, everyone that can legally carry a firearm to carry a firearm to protect themselves and their families just in case the need arises. The girls were not hurt. Those would-be burglars are still on the run. Senator Mitch McConnell's campaign is in Twitter jail. That means the account is not allowed to tweet. Senator McConnell's campaign manager says the account was locked because they posted a video of a rally outside of McConnell's Louisville home. They say threats were made against the senator. McConnell's campaign says they've appealed to Twitter, but the social media platform told them the account will remain locked until the campaign deletes the video. Thursday, Vice President Mike Pence is making a stop in Clay County. He's expected to talk about the state's response to the opioid crisis and the Innovative Readiness Program. Clay County residents at Pat's Snack Bar in Manchester are reacting to the news of the upcoming visit. Longtime resident Richard Couch says it will be a historic moment. It's one of the greatest things that ever happened to Clay County, that the people in Washington care enough to come and talk to us in person. The vice president is expected to start speaking around 1245 at EKU's Manchester Satellite Campus. We will carry it live on WYMT and WYMT.com. It's starting to get a little bit rainy across the mountains. We're seeing, hearing a little bit of rain here at the studio. I'll go ahead and take you to the front porch. Front porch first. Words are hard this evening. You'll notice that the wet roads over there. So we are seeing a little bit of that heavy rain. Interstate 64 up into Moorhead. You're seeing rain falling there a little bit earlier this evening. Now starting to get a little bit on the foggy side. I think that patchy dense fog is going to be possible late tonight and early as we head into your Thursday morning. Satellite and radar shows a few of those pop up showers and storms that we've seen kind of throughout the day that continuing into those evening hours. Here it is now. You can see that heavy shower that just moved through hazard. It is very small. 
small, but definitely packing a little bit of a punch. You'll notice into southern Pikeville, southern Floyd County as well, dealing with a few of those rain chances. You'll notice temperatures upper 60s to lower 70s. We'll probably start to cool off here in Hazard in just a second after that rain moved through. Really, we'll be dropping anywhere from those low to mid 60s tonight. Partly cloudy skies. We will we will start to dry out as we head into the rest of those overnight hours. Once again, could be dealing with that patchy dense fog. I'll have a look at tomorrow's forecast and the rest of the week and even into the weekend coming up in just a few short minutes. All right, Paige, thank you. Hospital employees and their loved ones lined the front of the Pineville Community Hospital in protest this afternoon, just hours before the hospital stopped services. Some said they believed the city did everything they could before they had to stop funding hospital operations. Local and state officials stood with the employees, hoping for answers about the hospital's future. You know, we've paid a lot of money to keep our ER open, so, you know, maybe this debt that we ran up, at least we've saved a few lives and been able to fly a few people out and, and save their lives. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a little bigger than just saving the hospital. In a statement, the hospital administration said, quote, the hospital would no longer provide emergency room services or other services after 7 p.m. on Wednesday. So now the future remains unclear. Congressman Hal Rogers released a statement on the situation tonight saying, quote, despite the interruption of health care services at Pineville Community Hospital, I have worked to facilitate communications between hospital officials, necessary federal agencies and the city of Pineville for several months. And those conversations will continue. Rural hospitals often face difficult challenges to keep their doors open, but the people of Pineville can rest assured that Every resource will be exhausted to ensure local residents will have access to medical services as we continue to work toward a sustainable resolution. As the school year begins, Kentucky lawmakers want to make sure students are safely getting off the school bus and drivers are paying attention. State Representative Robert Goforth pre-filed a bill last week that would require the installation of stop arm cameras on all Kentucky school buses. The law would impose a $200 fine on violators for a first offense and a $500 fine for any additional offense within a three-year period. If the bill passes, schools would have to have the cameras on their buses by 2023. Well, many Eastern Kentucky students woke up bright and early this morning for the first day of school. High school students in Martin County were greeted with a brand new building. The large floor plan for the students left some of them worried about getting lost, but teachers helped those students find their classes. Principal Martha Williams says, so far, so good. I'm really kind of pleased because I feel like, considering we're in a new building, that things are going relatively smooth. To find out when school starts back in your county, we have a complete list on WYMT.com. Letcher County officials are taking a new approach to help with an ongoing crisis that's affected the entire country. Since March 25th, 102 people have gone from behind bars at the Letcher County Jail to the road to a better life at the Addiction Recovery Center. What we're doing is amazing. I think there's miracles all around, and that's evidence of 102 people coming out of this little jail right here in Letcher County since March 25th, who's got to leave here and go have a chance to get their life back together. For more information about addiction recovery care, you can find this story on our website. The Eastern Kentucky Concentrated Employment Program is partnering with a veteran-owned company to bring jobs to Eastern Kentucky. Applicants will have the opportunity to train in various industries related to cybersecurity. WINT's Lacey Roberts explains what that means. Cybersecurity is growing at an increasing rate across the country. There have been issues nationally, even in metro areas and rural areas, with ransomware attacks, cyber attacks, and things of that nature causing a need for these types of jobs, companies now focus on this issue in a different light. What we at EKSEP decided to do was to bring a training program that was going to give Eastern Kentuckians an opportunity to not only train uh, in various aspects of cybersecurity, but also become certified. Preparing them to participate in a work study environment with a concentration on remote employment. We're looking at that as an opportunity for people to be able to stay in Eastern Kentucky, 
and to train and become certified in those occupations and then work here in the region for employers that are outside of the region. Using this opportunity to take advantage of the digital economy. With a job demand that's growing at two and a half times the national rate for most other occupations and sectors nationally, uh, those are opportunities that our people can do. Teleworks is an example with more than 2,000 job placements proving this model is successful. A little more of a training commitment, but nonetheless it's something our people deserve and that's what we're doing it for. But what is cybersecurity? It's early threat detection, entry level cyber analysts, These people who are basically like air traffic controllers would be at an airport. Giving them unlimited growth potential. And Perry County, Lacey Roberts, WYMT Mountain News. Training is set to begin in late September. Applications are available now until August 15th. These types of jobs bring in an average of $50,000 a year. Coming up on Mountain News at 11, a homemade plane crashes in California. Officials are trying to figure out what caused the deadly accident. But first, a rogue wave slams onlookers in China. And we're looking at a pretty nice day as we head into your Thursday before more rain arrives on Friday. Those details coming up.